I recently wrote the step one exam and I passed. So. My hallelujah belongs to you. testing mic one and two <laughs> hello lovely people welcome back to the runs tv this is dr fioife here yeah it's been a long time uh i started internship i was learning for this exam so that's why i've been away <laughs> and i will still go away <laughs> i recently wrote the step one exam and i passed so i want to share my journey so that i can help you to also pass yours Anyway, today we are just talking about the USMLE journey, how I started, the mistakes, the tips and tricks, the resources that I use. So we are talking about everything from the timeline, the timetable, practice exams, the cost, the ECFMG process, the weeks to the exams, what I did, the exam center and how the exam went and the rules everything that you need to know will be in this video it's going to be a long video i really really don't want it to be long but it's going to be long because you didn't have everything in this video from the beginning god <laughs> in the beginning god in the beginning of your business god not money in the beginning of ministry god in the beginning of marriage god he is called alpha Omega. In the beginning. In the in the beginning. In the I'm a Christian. Yeah. I love God. So the first thing I did was to pray to God and inquire about this exam, whether I should go in or not. And God gave a reply. So I started the journey. Around 2017 was when I started the journey. I didn't really know what. It was then just watching videos and then I tried to do the first eight questions by then just pre-testing my knowledge and the the results were very low at that point because I really didn't know about this exam. In 2018, however, I got my step uh, one book and then I started reading it. But I just read cardio out of it and then never went back to this book until 2019 when i started uh, my family planning rotations i started back the journey and i did like four systems and i stopped so all these were like the pre-learning stages i wasn't really dedicated during those times though i did patoma then i did bots and beyond 
just to help with the rotation at then not really really serious so from november 2022 last year i started being serious like that's my dedicated period from then till april i was still learning but then i started internship i wanted to write my exam around that time in may then i stopped learning again because i was doing internship and it was rough so at that point i was just doing questions watching video not really good studies when i decided to take the exam in september i started being serious in august august to september if i want to put all this together my time frame will be one year now let's talk about the resources and how i used it so first patoma because i was in school by then using it to study alongside my lectures and then i use bot and beyond the videos are very detailed how to use bots and beyond he specifically states how the questions are going to be worded when you are listening to him what you would do is get a notebook and write supposing maybe about wound healing he's going to talk about how the question is going to be framed make sure you write that and remember and you realize they see the same thing in your world you also use it while you are using your first aid book it kind of explain the first aid book the same thing with patoma it also explains the pathology part of it so that is how you use the book don't watch the video separately and read first aid differently you can add them together coming to the first aid now <laughs> not as exaggerating but i think i've read first aid like five to six times patoma like twice but and beyond to i think one and a half <laughs> like in between another way i used the first aid to was to go on Facebook during the dedicated period because by then I was tired of Patoma's voice and tired of bot and beyond right so I just go online if I need a topic on maybe heart failure I just google on YouTube whatever video comes up I watch it and then read the first aid alongside so that's what I did during my dedicated period and I'll put a link of like some topics that I, I did or found in, on YouTube that were very helpful. I'm going to put like create a, a link so that you guys can watch it if you like. But definitely the page to visit was um, Betty Medicine for your biochemistry and almost everything. And also check Ninja Ned. His videos are long, but it will help. For Biostat, you can check Randy Nell. Also one um, person that i really followed his journey was uh usmle booster he has some amazing 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 content i'll put all the links to the channels so that you can go and visit and also get inspired to get your result another way i use the first aid was to always do the pharmacology aspect of the system first the reason being that by the time you finish reading and get to the pharmacology exhausted and sometimes become complicated and you don't want to neither is starting it first also easy but the reason i did that was although i don't get to learn and everything i have an idea about the the drug so while reading about the pathology my mind it takes my mind back to the pharmacology or where this is applied so when i read it back again it's much easier but i also created a farm card right they are cards of the various systems and you can find this on amazon i also put the link it's just for you to carry around you anywhere that you are going so like per any system here all i did was to carry it around and be um, memorizing so i write back this on paper because when you are building a house you have to lay a foundation so first thing first i memorize the drugs after that then i'll now look into the first aid book to check the mechanism of action not everything will stick but it's okay then i'll now start reading the first aid um, the system so by the time i'm done with the system i have fair knowledge about the pharmacology after that watching videos from especially i use dirty medicine for my pharmacology a lot I just watch it over and over again. I can't tell you how many times I've watched it. I've watched it over and over again. So they stick. So for the first aid, what I did was that I quizzed myself page by page. So that instead of going to revise the entire book, I just try to answer questions. 
for example at first this is what i did right system by system so instead of going back to the first aid i'll just look at these questions and solve them the ones i don't know then i go and review them so that's how i was reviewing the first aid page by page that's what i did then i realized that i was more fixated to certain systems so i went on to these cards i created them myself so it's it, this is all the system what i did was to just shuffle it if you know how to play card yes yeah, so i shuffle it do this and then you know i pick one so this talk about pathology paraneoplastic syndrome so i begin to list the paraneoplastic syndrome that's what i do in the morning and evening so i used to do like four or five cards and ten five in the morning five in the evening if i'm very good at it i put it away so that's how i revise page by page i'm such an audiovisual learner that way i have a picture memory of first aid <laughs> before march i can tell you like what even the line the pages the pictures will tell you where and when where this is because of this card you don't need the card you can tell all you need is to just quiz yourself on page by page so that when you move to the next try and find out if what you just learned sticked or by chemistry draw it to know it that's it you have to draw those cycle you know they'll tell you this is not important this is not important but when you get to the exam they're asking one before so you really need to know the cycle so that's what i did i drew it in a book every time the cycle so that's how i got comfortable with biochemistry for immunology i'll put the link there's a video that i watched and then i just go step by step with the first aid uh, hema hema was my problem and hema came on the exam <laughs> <laughs> so um, for hematology, I watched nin Ninja Ned, but it's just one of those topics that we're not sticking. I'm sorry, but I tried my best. <laughs> Biostat Randinel, he's so good. Put it on repeat and you're going to love Biostat. So what made me start doing Biostat? After I did the Unbox exam, I think I had 207 or something. I realized that all the questions I got wrong was biostat and, and ethics. Then I started taking it serious. I asked myself, do you want to spend all this time going to the exam because you, you don't know bio? Because initially I planned that I'll go to the exam without doing biostat. Don't do that. I realized it took my grade down to the 207 that I had. So that was when I started taking biostat serious. So I went to Randy Nell and then fixed that. I was a bit comfortable with biostat. But the ethics was good by the help of Ellen. <laughs> Ellen, thank you. <laughs> For my timetable, the pre-dedicated period, each system will be one week till wh whatever duration that I had. But I didn't really complete anything. Even with the dedicated, the start up was still one week for each system until I was done. After I was done with the first pass, the next pass was two to three days per each system until I was done. After that, it became hours per system um for the third pass so i was like getting to four or eight hours to read the system then when i started internship i didn't have time so the hours became shorter sometimes i need to take four hours three hours to finish a system during the dedicated period i created um this board right i'm going to put a picture so that you see but what i basically did was um just to repeat the systems right and went to take my MBMEs, and then I did the difficult topics. Okay, what I didn't say. So during all the studies, after my first pass, I wrote topics that I didn't understand that were difficult. Then I tried to work on them. During the second time, I still wrote the ones that were left. I tried to work on them, and during the third time, I tried to work on them. Throughout this period, I was still finding difficulties. So during my dedicated period in August, the timetable that I wrote, it's just to tackle difficult topics. Also, when you are doing the Q banks, you realize that there are some questions that they like asking. So it got to a point, it's just to revise commonly asked questions. So I created a video. I named the last prep. <laughs> so it's like a video of everything they normally ask. It's just on repeat when I'm eating, when I'm bathing, everywhere. I go as soon as I wake up the, the the playlist is on because I you don't have the time from that point I did 
test it again <laughs> for the last time so let me see first i did it like five to six pass for the last time but i couldn't complete it because i didn't have time for my last week i did the first aid repeat 2023 version i did everything with the exception of public health microbe and some of them i couldn't get time to do it my timetable for the last seven days uh, what i did was 100 concepts of gross anatomy and then immunology microbe images and labs those were just one day because i don't have time the next day i did biochem autonomic and farm pathology and pathoma pathoma just things that i need detergent i did biostat communication biostat images labs and hundred concepts on the exam day i watched back my the video that i'll be putting there on youtube it has images and everything i just kept watching them in the morning before i went to the exam center i had screenshots of first eight pages that i was using by myself like i've seen i have studied that they like questioning those pages so i have those screenshots too to go through but unfortunately i couldn't go through before the exam because i didn't have time so that is um till the exam <laughs> now let's talk about the assessment so i had a diagnostic test <laughs> and maybe probably confirmatory test and then in between other tests that i did so um the nbmes are just to assess the um, system that you are having difficulty with so i took the first nbme which was 25 i wrote all the topics that i was weak in and then worked on it and then i did the other mbmes so in short i did um 31 as my confirmatory test and i had 62 percent but all the mbmes i did from 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 and then i did the 31 online i did the latter part during my last week of prep because i was trying to stimulate the exam it wasn't intentional because i didn't have time now but it helped because on the main exam it wasn't it wasn't really different like i stimulated the tiredness from home so it was okay on the main exam so i request that you do that if you don't have the stamina don't do it don't do it but what i do before this test is to go and do the rapid review and all those rapid um, short notes on first aid, screenshot it, and my own notes that I made that are like high yield notes, I go through them before I do the test. That way, you're able to, you know, do better. How to use U World? U World is a learning tool, not an assessment tool. Yeah, in the beginning, it's going to be hard, you're going to fight in getting demotivated, but that's how it is, that's how you learn, right? So, how to use the U World? is whenever you do a question find out why your answer was wrong pay attention to similar answers to be able to differentiate like those differential diagnose trying to find out how urotic aciduria is different from otc <laughs> right spend time on things you don't know identify your weak areas extract more information from your world don't celebrate q bank success and don't feel bad when you get questions wrong Thank God you learn from it now and not a real exam because sometimes we get depressed when we find it. But this is what I just tell myself. <laughs> it's better you get it wrong now and fix it and not the main exam. Find out the concept the question is testing. They are always testing a particular concept. Avoid unnecessary writing or copying, else you are just producing a lot, lot, lot. But for me, I wrote excessively a lot, 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 lot because that's how I learn. But if not, that's how you learn, then find a way to write short and make sure you you read it i did you world some offline some online my friend had a q bank so she gave it to me and i was using it but in all i didn't complete you world because it was here and there <laughs> so i can't tell you whether i completed it or not i joined a group discussion for the you world which was very very helpful hello Ivan. <laughs> 
hello ellen and hello so they are finished but the thing is i wasn't joining every day so that's why i can't tell if i really finish you all or not the best way to increase your scores one as soon as you finish reading the system go and do a queue back that's how you retain the information the assessment that i did the ambos i did i think i i'll put a score did rs they were doing some tests around that time that particular exam was around april i also did the u of self-assessment one the free 120 closer to my exam so for the cost of the exam the id or the registration so for the certification process i think it's 165 and then the exam itself was 112 something or so almost 1200 us dollars and then the travel i spent around 400 us dollars to go the lodging around 300 us dollars for three days when you put all of this together it's close to three thousand i didn't buy the q bank so if you are buying q banks that will be more than that i was using my friends own and thank you tony very much i really appreciated that sacrifice and god bless you and grant you all your heart desires i'm really grateful imagine the stress the money that goes to this exam but why do we pay so much for exam are they cooking food they don't even give us the food or water anyway but that's the cost so in summary my tips and tricks i watched patoma bot and beyond i did five to six parts of first aid with my own card the card that the question that i was quizzing myself it's fun i just want to make the learning fun also the farm card and i did questions right after the system i also had screenshot of various pages those short ones that have summary of everything and also some pages that i've always seen in your world questions i have those screenshots that i always review i also did rapid review just before any exam that i was taking not most of them but some of them so the ones that i did before i did better than the ones i didn't and another trick that i found which wasn't planned was that i did four mbme 12 days to my exam that stimulated the tiredness level that i would have experienced in the exam and also for the u world there were days that i did seven blocks of u world and i was working by that was in home <laughs> uh, and then so you can just imagine i also did uh, first aid questions but in all these questions First aid, U World, Ambos, RS, they are all different in their own way, but they are all testing the same concept. And this has made me want to be an examiner. And all these board Q banks not repeat even a single question. I want to be an examiner. <laughs> so during the preps and then the Q bank sessions, I wrote topics that I didn't know, worked on it. So some of those topics were also revised in my last week and also the most common asked question in my last week. For anatomy, I love anatomy naturally. I used to be good at anatomy but not now. <laughs> I just use your world and also the 100 concepts of anatomy, yeah those ones. As soon as you finish, do questions immediately to solidify it. So those topics that I would have noticed in the U World and the Q banks, I then now created a folder, last prep, LP. So the last prep was videos, whether the difficult one or the um, uh, commonly asked one on YouTube and also on my laptop from the videos. So those ones, I learned it everywhere, cooking, bathing, washing, everything like i don't have a free time my laptop has cutted it has suffered right so that is that is how i did those the last part so those are my
tips and tricks. So what would I do differently? Initially, when I was doing the videos, I didn't do it with the first aid. That would prolong everything. So once you are watching the videos, if you watch something on interlookings on video, as soon as you are done, pause it, read your first aid, continue. As soon as you are done with the immunology system, do questions. So I learned those things late. Start it early. Two, <laughs> I didn't pay attention to wrong answers. The ones I pay attention to were the ones that like, Maybe I felt like I knew and I got it wrong. Then I'm ginger to know why I got it wrong. But I saved them for the last to review wrong answers, but I didn't get time. So just review them and make sure you do them before to your exam time. Don't push it very close. And if you don't get the time, what happens? Trust me, any question you're getting wrong, they'll meet you back right in the exam. Believe me when I tell you. They'll meet you. So put your life on wrong questions. And the reason why I wasn't really paying attention because I knew the material so well. I knew the first aid so well. So as soon as I, I get it wrong, I already know I already know why it's wrong. <laughs> but I should have paid attention to the other options and some of them more because I felt so stupid in the exam when some of them came like, oh my goodness, God help my life. I won't do this again. <laughs> Images. Images. Well, I knew about the images, so it's not something that I regretted. I watched from somebody's video, so I paid attention to the images. But even though I paid attention, the images still, you know the question they're asking you about images. So learn your images. I'll put all those playlists for you guys to see. How do we register this exam? So this exam is just something else. So the initial stages is to get your ID number one. So you go to the ECFMG site, just click on the part that says create an ID. So you are creating an ID, you are just giving your demographics. Then from there, five days, they are going to contact you and tell you that it was successful and this is your ID and your password. The second step is getting your, is it the certification process? So at that point, the process is just like any information you have given when you were starting the ID, they are just going to give it back to you. Are you the lad and sure if I click yes? Is this your AGS? Yes. You stay here, yes. So you are just clicking. They are just making sure that all your information are okay. So that is that um, point. And after you finish, they are going to get a summary page of everything that you have there. Form 186 is going to come up where you just download it. After you download, that process is not done. You will do online notarization. You go to the notary cam notary cam website where you go through a series of questioning to and everything so the form that you would have downloaded you will now from 186 you will now upload it your passport just make sure your passport is by you like the way i'm sitting hold it like this and snap and then they are going to notarize you and then you just sign online that face has end that's the part two you can do that as soon as your five days after you've been very uh, after your ID process is done. The next step is for you to now book your the processes for your documentation and you know booking the exam. So at that point too is the same thing registration process, your demographics, your school um, information. There's a lot of questions you have to answer. It's like 19 to 20. You just be clicking yes or no or just provide it. So that's like documentation. Here you have to be careful with your names. I have problem with my date of birth and I have problem with my name. So in Africa, we start calling our name with our, our, our last name before the first name. So my name is Fiaoi Pedelade. That's how we do it in Africa. In this part of Latin America, they start calling your first name before your last name. So that's how it's on my document. So that is an issue I need, to, I, I'm still solving, the process of solving. So make sure all those things are okay before you start those processes. So with the form 186, you pay 165 US dollars. That's what I paid at that point. Then now when you're booking the exam, the exam was 101,065 US dollars, if I'm not mistaken, because you're outside, um, US, you need to add more money. 
but the, around that time roughly just thousand two us dollars there's this place that say don't click twice read if you click twice they'll collect your money twice so just click once <laughs> They are going to notify if the process was successful you upload your documents right there and then they are going to contact your school later and be checking your emails don't wait if ecfmg will not be the one to contact you at this point you have to be checking your emails and the id to see how things are progressing from that point they are going to tell you that oh your process is successful you paid everything then they will now give you a scheduling permit if they give you a scheduling permit it has your number and id you will now go to another website the prometric center website go and click and put that you want to register an exam book confirm and so the scheduling permit has a number you copy it and paste and then they are going to give you an initial and then your region of testing and now you look for the date looking for this date it's not as easy as it is it was like gambling it's like <laughs> my friend tony was helping me to get it all of us will put our computer on trying to get the date so one thing you have to get your date early at the point that i was almost giving up the latin america i wanted to go to america to go and write the exam because there was no date available at trinidad to write the exam so that was how um the process went but i finally booked the exam which was 14th september and then i had to travel to trinidad i traveled two days before the exam because that was the only time i had i went on tuesday and the exam was on thursday so you can imagine how tired i was the things I left for the last on Wednesday to read didn't go well because my I had Wi-Fi issues. So don't leave your things for last because you might fall sick, you might have Wi-Fi issues, you can have other things. So do your things earlier. After you book the exam, you need to confirm the date seven days before your exam. And please read the instructions that are on the scheduling permit. You are supposed to carry this scheduling permit with you to the exam center. You have to photocopy it and, and print it and keep it with you because they will take it in the exam hall and use it. I went to the Prometric Center that early morning. So the morning of the exam, I was still learning, watching video, but my brain would have be sat at that point. My last MBMA that I took was the night before, so I was so tired. I didn't have Wi-Fi, so I had to do it in the night and it was so tiring. And then the main exam, I went. To the prometric center take my name sat down and waited for for invigilators to come now please put on free clothing that do not have pockets because those are going to steal your time on breaks because they need to search you all over you can't put on earrings to the exam you have to remove it so don't go with any jewelry or anything free but I carry cardigan because I may be cold. Yes, you might be cold at the exam center. So the one don't the one I had had pockets, so it wasted my time. So go with pocketless dresses. After that, they will search you, give you the instructions, you read. Ah, you go inside. When they will search you, just like they search at any place, and then from there they give you a key, and then the only thing you go in the exam with is the key and then your passport and then they give you a board and a marker to write on your money everything you think is valuable to you put it in the locker and lock it so i pack some food uh, water um i fried chicken and beef into cubes and then i cook kinky from guyana to trinidad <laughs> oh my goodness yes I carry KK to that place. Now when you go to the exam hall, the slate is there. Will you write your formulas or everything? So the exam is not like if it's starting nine, it's not like you're waiting for everybody to start nine, then you start the exam. Or no. As soon as you get to the exam and you log in with that number, your exam starts. You are not waiting for your friend. When I took the board, I just wrote Dell no foolish answer here but i didn't want them to know that 
I'm insulting myself, so I put Dell, D N E H, because I like picking foolish answer. One thing I'm very bad at is questioning Q banks. I'm not good. I don't have the tricks for it. I'm not good at it. Yeah, so I had to remind myself that mm, today's judgment day. We are not doing foolish answer here. Don't be stupid. Don't be religious. That was all I wrote on it. And whenever I have problem with a question, although I have I have flagged it, I'll write it there, number 16, 17 seconds, because mind you, this exam I flagged all my questions. <laughs> the exam itself, eight blocks, the one block being just the uh, instruction. So you can do the instruction offline, get that time to your break time. Which, which will make it one hour, right? So the other seven blocks are your questions. It's a 280 questions for seven hours with one hour break, making it eight. So I didn't know. When I went and after the exam, after the, the instruction, I was a block two. I have to quickly raise my hand. Said, what's, what's happening? They said, Mm -mm, that's the block because I thought I failed already <laughs> but the exam is more like everything you've studied everything you've gotten wrong is going to come right back every concept you've seen right there so pay attention to those if there's any one lesson pay attention to the wrong answers the exam is longer than you old. the exam is basic like it's not so classic classic like you see on you or so you have to do some thinking you do not have that time to think also the exam is more between the you world no the exam so how do i even describe the exam so in terms of long it's like times two you world in terms of how it is the nature is a mixture of you world and the free 120 like how big the the free 120 is that's how that quest those questions were but the options are very basic for instance we've seen the vignette and you think this vignette will look like somebody who have um niacin deficiency so instead of them putting niacin deficiency or putting all those things they are going to put in the option vitamins and it will take you some long long time before you know that vitamins is there because in your mind you are used to the niacin you are used to all those classic things so it's like whether we should learn the synonyms of what you are learning i don't know if it makes sense but that's how the question itself is it's tiring i did my first three blocks took a break like 20 minutes and went to drink water by the time i went to pee drink water sat down the food that i sent i couldn't even eat it came back the searching and everything will eat up your time. So I took like um, 25 minutes for my first break. Then I did the next two block and took a break. I went to pee and came back. Then the next block, now I was tired. So I took one, I took a next break. And that break I used it to pray because at this point I am tired. I don't have the strength. Then I, I did the other one that I finished. But these questions were so long. My third block, I was like, I do not have time for anything. Naturally, I'm bad at timing, even before, so I know. And it has not changed much. I finished my first block, maybe because of the adrenaline. I finished like um, 10 minutes before. So I'm like, hmm. Huh? When we go to the second one, the pictures, the images. I remember the third block, it was as if they put all the images on the third. I almost shouted because my brain wasn't doing the best at that point. I flagged all my questions, not because I didn't know I might get it. I don't know, maybe it's just because of exam. I just flag everything. Every time I feel like flagging, I flag. At the point, I could have eight minutes left with about 12 questions left. Some of them I was, I was contemplating between answers. It's not because I, I've gone through them already, but... I was just contemplating on those answers of them. I was just clicking it. At this point, I was tired. Dale, you are signing your destiny off at this point. <laughs> so when that occurred to me, my next block, I decided that although there's no time, 
let me take the time to read some of them out to actually make the decision so for instance if i'm left with 10 and i have eight minutes let me at least take the time to do five and do it well and choose something then the rest five i can you know click it click it out it's doable so that's how i ended up with the other block but the third block those ones i was i said hmm, this will not see me now that i'm getting these questions wrong and fail me <laughs> But the exam is doable, it's okay. You feel like it's an MBME, you feel like it's the UO that you are doing. And that is what happened to me. It was okay. I was comfortable. I didn't have any anxiety before. I was very comfortable before the exam. It's just that I wish I had time and not being in the hospital to really, really like go through everything. But the exam was okay. I knew it was going to go well. Honest, when I got to the exam, I was so excited to write this exam. I don't know, I was so happy to write it. They have sent the results 13 days after the exam, but <laughs> God was ahead of them. Six days after my exam, I had a dream. I passed my exam, so I knew you have to go to the website again, click, and then you get your score, and then yeah, that's how you get a score. I reached out to Anela and the sister, they helped me with the links to places to stay, the hotel, and then I booked it. Thank you, Anela. Thank you, Anissa. And I must say, Trinidadians so are nice. <laughs> very, very nice. I felt like I was in Ghana. Yeah, I think <laughs> it, it was okay. nice. The World Garden picked me from the airport like to the house. You know, they were more like a family. The place is like at the hillside. It was nice. And I felt like I was in Ghana, in Ibri. And they were just hospitable. So I recommend for you to stay in case you want to write the exam. You need to stay at San Juan and stay at St. Joseph. These are the places close to the exam center. Where I stayed was just 20 minutes to the um, exam center. And also, if you book a place near training mall, because that's the only place I can, the landmark I can give you. I don't know any other place. That one is a heavy, heavy traffic. You don't want to go into an exam and then be in that heavy traffic. So stay at those two places that I mentioned. They are the closest. But if you want the number of where I stayed, that's it. And I wished I had went there not to write the exam so I can sleep in that house like that and not move. Like not do anything, just sleep. <laughs> Maybe in future I'll do that. I remember after exam when <laughs> they came to pick me up, the mother was like, oh, you pass, you pass. <laughs> Don't worry, you pass. I'm like, oh, she went to fill a jacuzzi for me to go and bath in. Like, it just felt like a family like just for me to like i i really appreciate it so just do your best and do it well and also believe in yourself there's one thing i know about myself i believe in myself like hey <laughs> yes i believe i can do it and that is it and also i believe in god and god give me a clear instruction to go for it so i did it i was walking in the path as at 2017 when i had a dream that I'll, I'll go through this i didn't notice how long the process would be and that's how working with god is even before i booked my exam it was god the, the tips and tricks i'm sharing which some of them might be popular to others some are unpopular those were god-given ideas that i used the time for my exam, God instructed when I should book the exam. After I did my RS, he gave me an instruction to get like 2.40. If I don't get 2.40, I shouldn't book an exam. And I had only 2.07, so I know I wasn't ready for the exam. Believe in yourself that you can do things. Get motivation from YouTube, from others. Watch videos. But don't look down upon yourself. Um, mentally, I did the work by telling myself that US MLA exam is just a, a normal exam. It's just like any exam there. It's just like any exam. And I always tell people around me. So I did that work to the extent that I didn't feel that thing that comes, oh, hey, this is a US MLA, this, no. I just did that in you know, my exam. What can happen? Is it that you pass or you fail, right? So I did that mentally. Physically, I put in the work. And then spiritually, you, you pray. And I, I kept on watching videos and praying and making sure that, you know, God directs me properly. So 
I'm going to show my score. Some of them I had 16, some of them I had 20 from the beginning. I didn't even know that I'll be sharing this picture. I just like keeping stuff. Put your trust in God. He's the only person that can help you. Oh, the most important thing. USML is a depression pill to take. You get depressed. I can assure you. Then from there, you learn from it. That's how you grow with it. It's a learning process. If God knows it would not help you, then you won't get it. So it's at this point that people quit. But I'm just letting you know that it's part of it. Learn with it. When you get the questions from there are some times that you know you believe in yourself and you just be getting some stupid scores, you know. And you're going to get depressed. Mine my depression was the initial moment. Like even before I started dedication that was when i didn't even know it was in nature but when i identified it first i just told myself it's a learning process you get better i'll share the screenshots you see the things i used to write for myself all the time though i wasn't too hard harsh on myself like i'm okay but you get depressed you cry you miss your family friends it's everything them. I'm here to tell you that if you can do this with SMLE, you will pass. Just be hungry for studies. Be hungry for studies. Be dedicated. Do all that you can. There's nothing that is impossible with your God. He's the I am that I am. He's not going to fail you. Be dedicated to God. Be dedicated to studies. You can do it. <laughs> Someone needs five weeks to study, to pass this exam. Why can't you? You can. Just be focused. Be hungry for God this time. Think about the money that is paying. Think about, about everything that your dad is doing for you as a motivation. In case you are down, come back to this watch note. God is assuring you. He's the owner of that exam. You are going to achieve greater things this year. There's so much happiness for you this year. Focus and enjoy at last. Focus. And I know I'm going to achieve this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can. Don't look at anybody. Don't look back. Not to anybody. Just be focused. Don't get discouraged about the, the exam question. Just be focused. God is going to make it up to you. And I can end this video by saying thank you, Daddy. Thank you um, to my siblings, Sister Kofa. Maosime, Lulu, my friends, Trisha, Millicent, Gift, Presla, everybody really, like, I took time out and then just zone out and I have to keep explaining to them that I have to do it, like, Sally, I'm thankful for all of them. And I'm not done with the exam yet, so I'm thanking people in advance. This is just the end of the road for step one. Now, let's give praise to the most high let's lift the one who gave us the victory right bye my hallelujah belongs to you Of 
You finish what you start. 